Love him or hate him, he's known for speaking his mind. Calvin McKenzie, the man behind the headlines, Freddy Star Ate My Hamster and Gotcha, joins me now to speak about what it takes to spearhead the largest UK newspaper and succeed in media today. Well, Calvin, really your approach to business is perhaps you could say selling sensation. I don't really agree with that. It, it, I mean, if you're talking about the newspaper business, well, the newspaper business has changed a lot. I mean, it's a very tough business to be in right now, I think. And we were a tabloid newspaper. And the bottom line on a tabloid newspaper is it has big headlines. So what were your hopes for The Sun when you took it on? And looking back, would you have done anything differently? I think the very element of, uh, of uh, the tabloid newspaper business was basically, you know, show business, revelatory, probably sexual antics and all the like, most of which appears to have gone, I regret to say, gone out of the newspaper business. But there's no, there's no issue about putting money. I mean, I don't know why, why anybody would think that money lay at the heart of heart of journalism. So you don't think news is fundamentally entertainment for a large majority of people? Actually the news business I think is a very difficult business, become more difficult today. I sometimes think that people are trying to get out of the way of news. Things like Channel 4 News which takes a kind of centre-left slant. Their audience has fallen 20-25% in the last four or five years. And all news providers are struggling. I'm not saying that you're not interested in news or that I'm not. But actually, if you ask the regular person, they're trying not to find it. What is the definition of news? Is news some terrible atrocity in Nigeria? Or is it Katie Price and um, the other Katie Hopkins having a massive row on Celebrity Big Brother? So I want to ask your opinion on page three. Doesn't sex sell anymore? One of my jobs when I edited the paper was to choose the page three girl. But I never felt there was anything sexual about it. If you wanted topless women, you don't go to the sun, do you? You go to Bournemouth on a, on a 28 degrees Celsius day. How seriously do you think the sun's taking this? Because if you look at it, they've only had around 300,000 signatures against it, but yet the circulation of the sun is huge. So why are they even concerned with such a small amount of complaints? Rupert Murdoch felt that it, it had run its course. And actually, when you look now, I mean, I don't know whether you've ever looked, I'm sure you haven't, but you ever look at Mail Online, those pictures down the right are not done because of the brains of the women involved. Those pictures have not been chosen for IQ reasons, have they? They've been chosen for a completely different reason, which is how much is being exposed. But they don't, they don't seem to run into any any headwinds and I wa often wonder whether really this is kind of politically inspired and it's an anti-Rupert murder offering. Well Charlie Hebdo made headlines obviously a few weeks back. If you were still the editor of The Sun would you have published those images knowing that it probably would have raised profits but it would have caused a backlash almost? I wouldn't worry about the profit side I mean you know it's quite an interesting moment that had you published that you were probably putting yourself, your family, and your staff on some kind of hit list, are you likely have to have done that? So that's a simple cartoon. And really you have to say that it's not your job to endanger other people through your own decisions. There is an argument that says your job is not to, to insult to the point of murder. And I do understand that. Um, I must say that people getting so caught up that they would reach for a gun in order to silence. Honestly, those magazines, they didn't sell many. It was of no account. And the guy running it had a real issue about Islam. Almost certainly I would never, I've never run it. Well, finally, the media industry is really changing and newspapers are almost a dying breed. And I know a lot of TV stations are even losing money. Yeah. So where do you see the future of the media? In the end, if people don't want it, then that is absolutely where it is. It's the people who are deciding that they don't want this. Now, papers, you're quite right, are in, are in big scale decline. But what about local papers? They're literally being wiped out. But is it a case of the newspapers and media is dying out because people don't want it? Is it more a case that they can get it for free on the internet and that sort of thing, so they're not buying it? So news is going to die out because of that, not because people don't uh, look, want it? I agree with you. That is a good point. But it, it is not the local point. It, in the national point, I totally agree. And on Twitter, Rolf Harris gets seven years, right? The following day in the papers, you know, thousands of miles of coverage. But actually, 
you probably know enough. Do you know what I mean? You say seven years, you've got it in 140 characters, that's it. Fox News, for instance. Fox News, three dying crash. Uh, senator says something in Washington. On comes a guy with comment, bang, right-wing comment, massive spike. That's what people want. They want big, fierce debate, either right or left. Not collectively together, just right or left. I think that is the future of news, so they take the points. But I do agree with you, the news business is changing very quickly and it's very hard to know where the commercial imperative is. Mm -hmm.